Where's this guy's gains? This guy's got no muscle at all. Why is he so skinny? He's been training for so long. Does this guy lift? Bro, do you even lift? Bro, do you even lift? What? No, 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 I have gains. No, they're not gone. No, 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 I'm not skinny. Whoa, 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 no, no. Jesse. Wait, whoa, wake up. Oh. Wake up. Oh man, I was having the worst nightmare that I was losing all my gains. Losing your gains? Yeah. Let me, can I teach you something? Sure. So, see if I had this hundred bucks here, right? If I already give that to you, right? You could potentially lose it, right? Correct. But, but since, let's say it was never yours in the first place, you really can't lose it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Wait, are you talking about my gains? Wait, also, can I have that hundred bucks? Stop sleeping in the gym! What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. Right, now you're just teasing me. Oh, what? Oh, I didn't even notice, this is here. Yeah. Is, no, is this what you're looking for? Yeah. Give it. I'll tell you what, if that intro of yours actually delivers that everybody's waiting for, then maybe you can get this, okay? All right, that's fair. All right, guys, talk, actually talking about things that are coming since that intro is never coming, what if there was a way that you could tell something was coming up and actually do something to intervene before it was too late. Well, today I want to give you five red flags that you're actually not gaining muscle. You see, we all go to the gym when we're trying to build muscle. When the focus of our training is hypertrophy, we go to the gym with the goal of actually trying to build muscle. But we may not be. And the good thing is that there's actually some signs that will come in ahead of time that will point you in the right direction to change something up. You're not on the right track. Today I want to cover five of those one by one, break it all down so that you can do something about it, realize that it's going on, and then most importantly do something about it before it's too late. All right, number one, the first red flag you should be aware of is if you're not getting a pump, you're not making gains. Now look, I know you're probably saying, I thought the pump was long ago sort of brushed off as not that important other than maybe to Arnold. The fact is the pump is important, and actually new science is pointing to some additional ways that it might be important. But what I think it is, is it potentially is indicative of the style of training that you're adopting right now. Because let's face it, if you're healthy, you should be getting an increased blood flow to the tissues that are working. In a similar way that when you eat, your stomach should have more blood that flows to it. However, if what's happening here is you're not getting a pump from your training because you're relying on one single method, progressive overload, and building strength to produce your size gains, then I'm inviting you to look into other opportunities to train for hypertrophy because that's what it's all about here. And one of the best ways to do that is through metabolic training. Metabolic training is going to involve many more repetitions, done with a little bit lighter weight. But we know, again, as we've talked about many times on this channel, there is a great opportunity for hypertrophy through metabolic training. And it doesn't dry up as quickly as the progressive overload route does, meaning you can't continue to add weight to the bar to produce all of your gains. The secondary benefit I will say is that we have seen recently that even the increased stress on the muscle cell as it gets engorged becomes a stimulus for hypertrophy. So we don't want to discount the benefit of the pump and if you're not getting it in your training, you're either too dogmatic and unidimensional on how you train, which means you should start opening your eyes to other ways to train, or you just really need to start embracing the fact that the pump will help you to actually add more size. All right, the second red flag here is that when you do this, you can't feel anything. Like you can't get sore or discomfort here in your arm. See, I've covered this topic before, and we're talking about the inability to create muscular discomfort under contraction. What does that mean? It's not the same as muscle soreness. I'm talking about the ability to create discomfort because of the act of contracting a muscle. And it's key because it represents your ability to create a mind-muscle connection with the muscle that you're trying to train. And why that matters when you're trying to create muscle hypertrophy is that overall you need to have a good ability to recruit the muscle you're trying to train. In other words, to recruit as many muscle fibers to the action as possible so that you're supplying enough of a stimulus for growth. So do this for me. Take your tricep here, straighten out your arm, and get your arm back behind your body. Right here, if you don't get a tightness that actually is uncomfortable, then you likely don't have a good mind-muscle connection with, let's say, the triceps. And with the biceps, if you bring your arm up, 
contract, and then even raise your arm up higher into shoulder flexion, that should elicit some type of soreness. If neither of those does, and you can do it even with your chest as well across your body, if none of these things are causing a real contraction discomfort, then you don't have that mind-muscle connection needed to create optimal hypertrophy because this is the thing. Even though we're talking about isolated muscle groups, take them back into a compound movement with each contributing better to the overall lift and your gains are gonna be better, I promise you. So look into these deficiencies one by one and if they're there, guys, it's an indicator that you're not getting the best gains you could. All right, red flag number three actually should be a yellow one because if yours is yellow, you're in trouble. And that is the color of your urine. Guys, you shouldn't actually be peeing yellow. It's not a good thing. You should be more on, let's say, like the north side of clear, just a little bit yellow. And as a matter of fact, you also should be going pretty often, nine, 10, 11, even 12 times a day. So here's the thing. If you're not, if you're not going often enough or the color is too dark, you're likely dehydrated and I don't care how on point your training is, that is a major red flag because you cannot build muscle in a dehydrated environment. Just like you can't really grow a flower really well in a dried out potted plant, you gotta make sure that you're providing enough hydration to your muscles in order to keep them growing. So what I'm recommending is you simply increase your water intake throughout the day. I've given a tip in the past where I tell you to keep some rubber bands around the outside of a bottle and every time you drink that bottle, you fill it back up again and take off that rubber band. It's an easy way for you to keep track of how much liquid you're taking in. But regardless of the fact, if you're not going often enough or clear enough, then the symptom is actually just telling you right away what the cure is and that is drink more. Red flag number four is actually a commentary on your under recovery from your training. And we know that in order to build muscle, you have to recover from each bout of training. And we can do it here and measure it with this. And I talked about this before in an individual video. I showed you how if you get one of these old fashioned scales that has the dial on it still, the non-digital version, and you simply get up and you squeeze it like that, it will give you a measure of what your output is in your grip strength. And if you do that each morning, at a consistent time and you look for changes in the output in your force through doing that, you can determine whether or not your central nervous system is actually recovering ahead of your actual body. And it's good when we have the ability to sort of predict what's going to happen to our body beforehand so we can actually intervene and change our training up, maybe take an additional rest day or maybe change the focus of our training for a training block. What you're looking for here is a 10% drop in your strength from one morning to the next, or at least over the course of a couple mornings, as an indicator that maybe you're not really recovering enough. What I want you to do is make sure that you change something, however. If this is happening here, guys, again, your central nervous system is trying to tell you something. In very much the same way that you start to sweat before you faint, there's a sign that comes ahead of the actual act. The act here is that you're not making muscle gains. The sign here is that you need to do something about it and fast. And finally, red flag number five has to do with your actual training day, and that is your interset drop off. What I'm talking about is what does your performance look like from one set to the next, particularly when it's early on in your training. So let me give you an example. Here I am doing a lat pull down. And let's just say I'm doing my 10 rep max, taken to failure here in a given set. So 10 reps of let's say 150 pounds. Now, if in the next set, if I rest, let's say, 90 seconds to two minutes between sets and I come back, in this next set, if my drop-off occurs at, let's say, with the same weight at six reps or so, greater than 20 to 30% of what I did the first set, then there's a problem there. I need to look at my ability to recover. Again, particularly if this is happening early in the training session because it's an indicator that maybe I came into this workout under-recovered. I didn't actually recover from the last time I trained my back and I'm coming into this workout and I'm already having difficulties. We could also look at it in a different way. If I'm going to allow myself, okay, yeah, I'm naturally going to fatigue from one set to the next, I'm gonna allow myself to drop off, so I'm gonna drop the weight a little bit. If I drop the weight, let's say 10 or 15%, so 150 down to 135 or 130 or so, and I can't do that for the same number of reps after that same minute and a half or two minutes, again, there's a red flag for me there that I'm not really recovering very well, not just from the first set, but on the bigger scheme, sort of in the bigger picture, probably from the last workout. And again, as I stated in the last point, under recovery is going to be the biggest enemy for the natural lifter for trying to get back and build muscle from workout to workout, from session to session, and keep those gains coming. Look at how you're performing from one set to the next as an indicator of that, and be honest about it, and be willing to make the change if need be. 
All right, guys, so to recap here, the red flags, if they're present, the good news is there's something you could do about it. If you're lacking that pump, beyond just looking up what Arnold had to say about it, which could be quite motivating for you to seek it out, I will tell you introducing metabolic training into your regimen beyond just chasing size gains through strength gains is gonna be very beneficial to you. Number two, if you're lacking that mind-muscle connection, I have gone into great detail in multiple videos on how you can do this step by step. I'm gonna link them for you here at the end of the video. Number three, if you're not peeing enough or you're peeing too dark when you do, the symptom is actually very evident and the solution is to drink more and to drink more often. It's that simple. Number four, if you're realizing that you're not recovering because you are taking my advice and get one of those old scales and measuring yourself, the idea is you need to change something about your training. Maybe take a few more off days in between your sessions or maybe take a few more days off between training that particular muscle group so you have a chance to actually allow it to recover. And number five, if you're seeing that drop off and it is too severe, particularly early in your training, you're gonna wanna try to increase your rest periods between sets, see if that improves things. And if it doesn't, maybe again, you gotta revisit your style of training right now and look at maybe possibly changing something. If you're looking to change to something that is scientific and step-by-step -step and progressive and will hopefully allow you to avoid all of these pitfalls, that's what all the Athlinex training programs do, guys. They're all available for you over at athlinex.com. Set aside and set up by the specific goal of what it is you want to achieve. Head over there and check them out. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what you want to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. And if you haven't already done so, guys, make sure you click subscribe and turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. Jesse. It's yours for the taking, buddy. That intro better be really good. Oh, it will be!